What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a full comparison between the new Samsung Galaxy M31 and the Samsung Galaxy M30s. Now, I think the M31 is probably one of the most hyped smartphones for the international market, and for good reason. This is a device that packs a whole lot for a really good price. But Samsung has been absolutely crazy with their new phone releases over the last year. And this new M31 comes just six months after the release of the M30s, which itself came six months after the regular M30. With these super quick release cycles, I think a lot of folks are probably wondering what phone they should really aim for if they're looking for a new one, and also if it's even worth upgrading from one phone to another this often? And those are the questions I hope to answer in this video. If you aren't already familiar, Samsung's M phones are the sort of budget and mid-range devices for the international market, primarily India and Asia. They're comparable to the A series phones that I think the rest of the world is already very familiar with, but these M series devices actually offer some very specific features and specs that separate them from the A series. And it also makes me a little jealous that we don't really get them here in the US. So to kick things off, let's talk about pricing and availability. Like I said earlier, the older M30s came out just six months ago, and because it isn't really an outdated phone at this point, it still retails for right around its launch price, anywhere between $180 and $220, depending on where you're at and what model you go with. The brand new M31, on the other hand, is just a couple of weeks old, and it comes in at a little higher of a price, but not by much. It's got a range of about $210 to $250, bucks, give or take, but when comparing prices here, unlike a lot of other smartphones, I'm not actually seeing a whole lot of difference. Perhaps you could get a used M30s for cheaper on the secondhand market, but really we're talking at most maybe a $30 difference, if that. The main reason why the M30s hasn't drastically come down in price, beyond it being still relatively new, and why these phones are so close in price to begin with anyway, mainly has to do with the fact that they aren't all that different at all. Physically, the new M30 looks almost identical to the M30s, and I have to say I'm a little disappointed with that only because I thought the minor tweaks we saw from the A50s to the A51 were great, and I sort of expected a similar move here, but that's just not the case. Both these phones are practically identical in their design and form factor, and it's super difficult to tell them apart. They're both 6.4 inch devices with an all plastic build, rounded frame, and thicker than average body. The glossy, shiny finish looks and feels the same on both, though while the M30s got a two-tone sort of fun gradient paint job, the M31 has just two solid color options to choose from, either black or blue. Interestingly enough though, while it appears as though Samsung just reused the same housing from the M30s on this new phone, the M31 is actually a fraction of a millimeter taller for whatever reason, noticeably heavier in the hand, about three more grams, and of course the camera module around back has changed significantly as well. I'll get into the specs of the camera setup later, but one other physical thing I just want to mention is the fact that while the M30s's camera setup was nearly flush with the back of the phone, here on the M31 we do have a noticeable bulge that sticks out a bit from the back. Taking a look around at everything else, we have the same SIM and SD card slot on the left side, and the same volume and power buttons placed identically on each phone along the right. For whatever reason, Samsung moved the microphone on top to the opposite side on the M31, perhaps to leave more room for the upgraded lens setup. And underneath, with a single speaker, headphone jack, and charging port, everything remains the same. On the back, you'll also see that Samsung kept the same physical fingerprint reader on the new M31, and I think that's a great move. I like the placement, I like this setup over an in-display fingerprint reader, I think it's quicker and more accurate, and I applaud Samsung for leaving it unchanged. So like I mentioned earlier, with the launch of the M31, I was half expecting to see a refreshed screen and bezel design like we got on the A51 and A71, but unfortunately, we're stuck with the Infinity U teardrop notch setup and bigger than average bezels that frame the otherwise really awesome screen. And I guess if I have one single complaint about this new M31, this design choice would probably be it. Now even by 2020 standards, I think what we get is perfectly fine. It's still a good looking phone with a solid screen to body ratio, 
but I know Samsung can offer the Infinity O cutout with smaller bezels and a reduced bottom chin. They did it with the other A series phones that just came out. So it's time to refresh the design with the M series phones now too. Beyond that, the actual display technology on these M series phones is fantastic. We have the exact same AMOLED panel on both phones, so no major upgrades, but the 2340 by 1080 display I think is still really great. The only additional distinction I'm aware of that was added to the M31 is Gorilla Glass 3, but the rest of the viewing experience is identical, and I think that's totally fine. I have no complaints here with the displays on these phones. I don't really know what Samsung could have done differently if anything, and I think in the budget and mid-range space, Samsung smartphones displays are really competitive with how good they look. And ever since getting my hands on an A-series phone for the first time last year, I've been really impressed. By the way, if you were hoping for maybe a sound upgrade on the M31, we don't get that here either. It's the same single downward firing speaker that I showed you earlier, and to my knowledge, there wasn't any upgrades. It sounds the same, it gets just as loud, and we don't get that great stereo sound that maybe some people are used to on flagship phones, which is unfortunate. Still though, I think it's mostly fine for everyday listening. Spec-wise, you might be surprised to find out that we're actually dealing with nearly identical internals. The M30S packs a whole lot already, with Samsung's own Exynos 9611 chipset, the Mali G72 GPU, and either 4 or 6 gigabytes of RAM. And the M31, while 6 months newer, has pretty much the same inside. The Exynos 9611, the Mali G72 GPU, the only real difference is 6 gigs of RAM is standard on this phone, but like I said, you can get 6 gigs on the M30S anyway. Now, the M31 did ship with Android 10 and One UI 2 out of the box, which is great. So at first, we were getting the latest software with this latest phone while we waited for the update on the M30S. But actually, right after I filmed this video, Samsung did push out an update for the M30S to Android 10, which is great to see. So now, not only are you going to get the same internal specs, we're on even playing fields in regards to the software experience as well. And that means that not only are these phones identical now, it makes the upgrade argument that much harder to justify. I thought the M30S performed really well overall, and that obviously extends now to the M31 too. It's a solid device with good specs that perform well in everyday tasks and can even handle some gaming. And while I maybe had hoped for a performance boost in some capacity, I think what we have is still pretty solid. Unfortunately, the lack of NFC continues with the M31, which is a shame. I know a lot of folks rely on that for a number of reasons, and it continually not being added to the M-series devices I think is a big miss. Inside, both these phones are powered by massive 6,000 milliamp batteries, which is probably the main selling point for both of these phones. The battery capacity is some of the biggest in any phone out right now, and they each can last up to two days on a single charge. I don't think any upgrades were necessary here, 6,000 milliamps is plenty, but we're still charging using the 15 watt speeds, which is a bit of a shame, so no super fast charging for either device. Probably the most significant change to the M31 from the M30S has to do with both the front and rear cameras. Now, I do already have a separate dedicated camera comparison video out on the channel right now with picture and video samples, and I highly recommend you check that video out to see the difference for yourself in real world shooting conditions. But let's just talk about the hardware changes here so you know what's going on. The couple big things include a significant main lens upgrade. The M30S has a still respectable 48 megapixel f2.0 aperture shooter, but the Mega Monster M31 now packs a ridiculous 64 megapixel f1.8 shooter. The wide angle and depth sensing cameras I believe remain exactly the same, but the M31 also added an additional new fourth lens, a 5 megapixel macro lens for super up close pictures. Up front with the selfie camera, we go from a 16 megapixel f2.0 shooter on the M30S to a ridiculous 32 megapixel f2.0 2.0 lens on the M31 with 4K video recording here as well. If I can sum up the difference with the picture and video quality in one word, 
it would simply be details. The M31 with all its extra megapixels can capture so much more than the M30s can. And furthermore, the front facing camera on the M31 is also noticeably better. It handles skin tones more naturally. It doesn't smooth out the face as much and all in all offers a significantly nicer selfie. Like I said, check out my full camera comparisons for some real world pictures and videos and see for yourself because I think the difference here is pretty worthwhile. A few last things to note, we don't get any wireless charging addition or waterproofing either. So if you were looking for either of those features, you'll have to look elsewhere. Overall, I think the M31 offers really one big upgrade over the M30s, and that's the camera setup. Beyond that, we have the same design and form factor, same display, same internal specs, and now the same software experience as well. If you already have the M30s, I say hold off on upgrading, or maybe aim for a different phone altogether. If you have the standard M30 from a year ago though, or some other device that's a bit outdated, either device, the M31 or the M30s, 30s would be a great upgrade i'm sure and i think it's mainly going to come down to whether that 30 dollars price difference is important and how much you value taking pictures so there you go that's everything you need to know about the new m31 and m30s if i missed anything important definitely let me know down in the comments below also be sure to let me know what you think of each of these phones too do you think it's worth an upgrade i'd love to know your thoughts of course but hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.